Hey there, partner. Planning on heading out on the range in Red Dead Redemption 2? Well, before you go off half-cocked getting yourself into all manner of mischief, how's about you check out the seven helpful tips we've rounded up for you like kettle? We got advice on how to stay alive and how to deal with the local lawman should you find yourself falling afoul of him. For burgeoning outlaws about to set out on the trail, here are seven tips that should stand you in good stead, friend. And that's enough of that. In Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur Morgan has three different cores you'll need to take care of and pay attention to on a regular basis. Now, there's a survival element of sorts to consider in Red Dead 2, meaning having to eat and drink the right things in order to top up the health, stamina and dead eye cores. Or you can quickly medicate and fortify each core by consuming health cure tonics, bitters or snake oil, bearing in mind that there are more potent versions of these elixirs available from the general store and a miracle tonic will top up and fortify all three cores at once. Leveling up the cores is also vital, and it's helpful to know which actions contribute towards boosting their capacity, so stealthy kills and melee based combat factor into the growth of your health core. Running around enhances the stamina core, not unlike the Elder Scrolls 4 where you jump around and run, and headshots during gunfights are the optimum route to attain a healthy Deadeye core. A ginseng elixir will also give your health core a permanent kick, so it's worth looking out for those. Remember, a healthy core means a healthy outlaw. This might go against the outlaw's code, but sometimes you'll have opportunities to be the good guy. You ultimately decide the kind of outlaw you want to be, which ties into the game's honour system, your decisions filtering down into all sorts of different facets. Arthur's journal entries, his kill cams, how folks respond to him in general is all dictated by his honour level. Be a bad guy and you'll elicit fear in everyone you come across. Be a good guy and they'll greet you with a happy demeanour. So if you want to rob money from a beggar rather than give him money, kill innocents to loot their corpses and rob stagecoaches or trains, expect your honour to take a hit and the scale to tip towards the bad end of the spectrum. Conversely, donating to people requiring your charity, helping those in need randomly encountered on the trail, greeting citizens as you meet them and pitching in at your campsite will grant positive honour points that can lead to all sorts of neat benefits, like more heroic kill cams and even discounts at local stores and markets. See, sometimes it's just good to be good. Stay out of trouble. I'll try. An outlaw is only as good as his guns, and supplies he keeps. With that in mind, always be sure to have a satchel overflowing with tonics, provisions and ammunition. If you find yourself short on goods, a visit to the general store is essential unless you're short on funds, in which case you can pick plants and herbs to cook up your own tonics using a campfire. Be sure to keep your weapons cleaned and maintained using gun oil so that they're performing in tip-top condition, while stopping at a saloon for a bath and a good night's sleep can be a savvy move. When you find yourself in a dire and desperate situation, and chances are you will, then you're going to be exceedingly grateful that you have a miracle tonic and an ample stock of ammo. You'd also do well to ensure you have foodstuffs aplenty, ointments and revive tonics for your horse. Speaking of which... No longer is your trusty steed an expendable commodity that you can just dispense with at any time. You'll now form a lasting bond with your chosen horse, and while you can keep a stable of several nags, there'll always be one you keep as your main mount. As such, the bond you forge with your horse will have an impact on its health and stamina, although it's also worth noting that each has its own ceiling on how high its stats can go. If you have the cash, it can pay to go for a thoroughbred horse, as it has a higher stats cap than the others, making it faster, stronger and more durable. And if you're fearful of ever losing your horse if it's caught in crossfire or takes a nasty spill, ensure you have a horse reviver in your inventory so you can bring it back to its feet, and not have to start afresh bonding with a new horse from scratch. Keep it fed to keep its cores full and be sure to brush it and pat it from time to time, and your horse will quickly become a loyal, faithful equine friend that you can rely on to carry your burdens. Whenever you have the chance, take the nearest train to a destination. It's remarkably cheap and will take you right into the heart of each town or city across Red Dead Redemption 2's expansive world map. You'll also spare your horse and simultaneously give Arthur's bones a much needed rest. 
The same goes for stagecoaches. They'll get you to where you need to go quickly, easily and cheaply. It's definitely worth shelling out a few bucks to avoid getting into trouble on the trail. Because even if you're a paragon of virtue in Red Dead 2, you'll run into rival gangs, hostile wildlife, con artists out to make a quick buck, and other risks to you and your horse's health. That's why taking a train and stagecoach can be a very wise move at times. And if you do happen to be playing the game as a dirty, unscrupulous scumbag, you can rob the train once it arrives at its destination as well, saving the hassle of jumping to it while it's in motion. Every cloud and all that. Just be prepared for the full force of the law once you've extracted cash and valuables from those innocent passengers. Making cold hard cash is a constant concern for Arthur and the rest of the Vandalin gang, just to stay afloat while on the run from the law. But for Mr Morgans, and your own benefit, you'll need to engage in some extracurricular activities to fill your coffers with green. Petty crimes like robbing civilians and stores will only take you so far, and a high risk for very little reward. If you want to really rake in the big bucks, you'd do well to fulfil debt collections for Leopold Strauss or execute a daring bank heist. Taking on bounties for the local law enforcement and bringing the target back alive, lassoed and hogtied will also nab you a nice little payday, while selling off extraneous stuff like pelts, animal bits and other items you don't need can give you a tidy little cash injection. Getting good at the poker, blackjack, dominoes and five finger fillet tables also reaps modest monetary rewards, but certain story missions will really rake in the dough. Carry out a combination of all these different things and you'll be doing a little cowboy jig all the way to the bank. Yeehaw! While it's undeniably great fun to antagonise folks and start some outlaw shit, doing so will attract the attention of the law, which in turn can lead to being hounded by uncompromising, violent bounty hunters out for your hide. In most cases, it simply isn't worth tangling with the sheriff and his deputies, as you'll end up with a hefty bounty on your head and possibly have all of a town's amenities locked off to you. Should you raise enough hell to warrant a bounty, you can pay it off at the nearest post office, which doesn't come cheap, and once again, go about your business in the corresponding town and city. If you wanted dead or alive, however, all bets are off and down to venture into territories marked in red on your map brings with it a huge amount of risk. In all probability, the police will shoot you on sight in these regions. Be sure to carefully walk that thin blue line between obeying and breaking the law, and you'll do just fine, cowpoke. Yeah. Yeah. So that just about wraps things up then. We hope you extracted something of value from our doggone list of Red Dead Redemption 2 tips and tricks. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and we'll see you on down the trail. And I'm sorry for that terrible accent. Bye! <laughs>